are going to feature a testimony by a man of God named Mickey Robinson. You're going to be absolutely amazed when you hear this story because he was in a plane crash that, that literally destroyed him. In fact, it killed him. And yet he's alive to tell the tale. Hold on to your seat, seats right now and listen to this amazing, outstanding testimony of the goodness of God. I'd never met anybody who ever told me about anything personally, knowing God or anything supernatural, other than historically what I knew from stories from the Bible. Um, never met one person who told me they had a real relationship with Jesus. Never knew about uh, the need to really come into a relationship with, with the Lord through Jesus. And uh, I was busy getting it on. But, you know, there's not enough excitement in the world to ever satisfy. You always got to have more. And I like stuff that was edgy, you know, advent, you know, skiing. And, and I always liked aviation stuff. And so I started taking flying lessons. And I, I thought it would be more fun jumping out of airplanes. So I became a sport parachutist. And that really got me. I mean, I became obsessed with skydiving. It really consumed my life. My existence uh, revolved around that 30 to 60 seconds in free fall and that five minute parachute ride, then I had to do it again. It's like, mm -hmm. like a drug, you know, it's, it's like good. An addiction. Oh, totally. And then all of a sudden, one night, all that was going to change. Shortly after takeoff, I don't really recall much because I was kind of dozing off, uh, sitting next to the pilot, or actually sitting on the floor next to the pilot where we removed the seats in this new aircraft. And I was awakened by a sound that unfamiliar to me. It was the sound of the motor going completely silent. Uh -oh. And the pilot turned to me and he slapped me. He says, that's it, we're going down. So we just pitched forward and we're, wow. we plummeted straight down at over 100 miles an hour. And what was seen out of the cockpit, and this was told to me, I don't recall this, but we were going straight to the ground and we're headed right towards a gigantic oak tree. We did it, hit that tree going, like I said, over 100 miles an hour. And my face stopped my body going 100 miles an hour. So wow. I, uh, then the airplane cartwheeled on its wings and slammed into the ground. If you see pictures of the aircraft, it, not like anybody could survive this. So there was obviously injury and confusion, and the two students got pushed out the doorway and by one of my friends who was a very experienced jumper. And the fourth man out saw me moving in the pot and assumed we were leaving too. And just as he was going out, the plane went up in flames. And as he was running away, he heard screaming and realized I was trapped inside along with the pilot. And this brave man who was my friend and went back in the plane and saw me trying to jump, at, escape where the wing had been torn loose from mm -hmm. the airplane. But I was stuck, and but something on my, my uh, equipment or my mm -hmm. clothing it was caught, and I was soaked with fuel, and it was on fire oh, from head to toe. Wow. And just like you see in movies, a person whose whole body was engulfed in flames. And, and this is where God did the first miracle. This man grabbed a hold of my parachute harness and with his bare hands tore that loose. It's 2,000 pounds tensile strength in each one of those straps. Wow. Pulled so hard, he pulled his thumbs out of his sockets. Dragged me away from the plane and slapped the fire out. It kept reigniting, and then he tried to go back for the pilot, and he couldn't. He was burned alive. Well, they rushed me off to the hospital. Obviously, it was horrible, and uh, um, they rushed me off to the hospital and saw that I sustained very serious injuries. I had a brain injury. I had burns over a large portion of my body. I had to find out my eye was blind, my right eye was blind, uh, and, you know, tremendous cuts and, you know, this shock of, you know, that crash. They told my family I was going to die. They told my sister to come that day because I was not going to be there in the afternoon. I had an experience I had never heard about, never heard anything like this. Uh, um, as I was laying there in that condition, just racked with pain and, mm -hmm. and discomfort in every way possible, suddenly my my inner man, the real me, my spirit, sat up out of my body, and I could feel my legs go through the springs of the bed, wow. and my spirit came out of my body as if you would take a glove off your hand, and instantly I was in a spiritual world. Instantaneously, I knew this was the real world, and this man that I was seeing was the real me. Now, when that happened, were you aware of any pain still? Or no, I was totally kind of, kind no. completely separated from the pain and the carcass. Completely, no. And I didn't even remember. I turned around looking. I mean, I was mm -hmm. I was transferred immediately into a spiritual dimension, mm -hmm. and everything about the spirit world is more real than this world. Mm -hmm. The colors are mm -hmm. brighter. The edges of everything are sharper. The emotions are are just High enhanced. Pain. They are clear, and instantaneously, the thing that that really struck me the most was there was a complete absence of the awareness of time. Everything in this world is relative to time. You know, you mm -hmm. got up this morning, you'll go to bed at night, something is old, uh, something is new, it will get, get old, something is born, it will die. Everything in this plane, in the physical plane, in the natural plane, is relative mm -hmm. to time. But everything in the spiritual plane is relative to eternity. So what had been natural to be aware of time right. was totally gone. And I was totally aware of eternity. It is shocking, it is stunning to be, to be conscious and to know what eternity is. Also, Logic and reasoning doesn't happen there. 
uh, based on the sum total of all my intelligent thoughts that I've learned. You know, I'm, I had a death and I'm in the spirit world. It's like you just know that you know that you know. You just, it's like having a revelation constantly. And that's, it was incredible. And I was, I was, I knew I was traveling. I could feel, mm -hmm. you know, that I was traveling. And as I looked ahead, there was this pure white light. It was whiter than the whitest snow and brighter than 10,000 suns. And yet I could look right at it and it was compelling. And it was like I was being towed. I was I'm being towed yeah. like a tractor being. And, and as I was looking, I could, I could feel this anticipation. Wow. But then simultaneously that, on my right side, I could feel something and I looked and there was this blackness sweeping. Now this blackness, as I looked at it, instantly I was aware of its complete nature. It was eternal, like I was experiencing eternity. It was without any matter. It was without any life. It was void. And it was forever non-negotiable, cut off from the source of all life. And the more that I looked at it, the faster it would sweep. And the faster, and the more that that occurred, the more intense the feeling of the nature of being cut off and sealed oh, forever and whoa. separated it is hor Horrifying. horrific. Yeah. Horrific. You would not, I used to never be able to stand to be near anybody who could say go to hell after that. Because you wouldn't want the worst person, no. you wouldn't want Adolf Hitler, Ben Laden, Saddam, you wouldn't want any human being to ever go in there. It was oh. so horrible. And as that was sweeping, it got down to, it was eclipsing this light. So there was just a, it was like you're in a room and you close the door, a dark room, and there's a little space between the door and the door jam. It wasn't a door, it was really, this is a real place that I was seeing and that I was feeling. And as it was closing, it was eclipsing. And now I'm standing on the very edge, the precipice of eternal separation. And I scream out of my spirit, I'm sorry, I want to live. Give me another chance. And, and just before that was to close, I was standing in the presence of Almighty God. Ooh. And instantly I knew I would never die for eternity. And that's, that's I mean, mercy. it's unbelievable. Wow. And instantly I knew that this being who off, was off on, on this side of me, uh, who I didn't see, but I was standing in this river of golden radiation. It looked like a moving river of golden light. And this river went that way, it went that way, it was underneath me, it was going right through me. And this river was alive. I don't know how I'd describe it. He said that this, ri the river, of life. Yeah, this okay. river was alive, and I was, and it's going right through me, and I'm, I'm more alive than anybody can imagine. I mean, this is the height of the experience of life, it filled up with life, and I, and somehow I knew this being was going to take care of me for eternity. I didn't see the New Jerusalem. I didn't see any angels in heaven. I didn't see any people who had gone before me. This was the max. So I was so filled with, with just the. The love and the, all of God's majesty, all of His authority, all of His love, everything was just flowing through me. I was like vibrating, like a tuning yeah. fork, the very essence of, of God's nature. But when God spoke to me, and not in a language like you and I are talking now, but the knowledge of His purpose, the word of His purpose, came in through that same light. And I was, I was taken back to the same way. I was like being reeled in like a kite and went down through space and time, this dimension. As my spirit settled into my body and I could start to hear out of these ears and see out of this eye, I came to in the room, materialized, kind of like they beam up on Star Trek. Right. And I heard myself speaking in this beautiful language that I had known, never heard anybody talk about before. It's a heavenly language. Yeah, it was a beautiful language. And when my brain turned on, I thought, what in the heck is this other language? And I was no longer, uh, the person who was dying and dead was no, was no longer. And I was born again and filled with the Holy, Holy Ghost. I never heard about that. You know, for years I wondered, what was that blackness and why did it sweep down to where it was just a sliver, like about a half inch of white light? And years later, God revealed it to me. It was really a historical record of my life. That for all the years that I had lived, I was in darkness. And God gave me a space to cry out to Him. And in that space, it changed my future, my destiny, my whole purpose. I was, God loved me the whole time. God was with me. But, you know, don't let, please, don't wait until you're that desperate. We're a desperate right now. And He's, he's with you. And He... You know, you have a chance today to cry out to God. It's not complicated. It's not religious. I mean, certainly my prayer wasn't all that complicated. And it wasn't about religion. It was about I needed life. And there is no one of us before God that doesn't need the whole life that He has to offer. It's usually fear that keeps us from doing that. Or, or, or like we're afraid, well, I'm not good enough. That's the whole deal. We need God. 